There it is. That's the story of this football game. Spread them around pretty evenly. Greg Martin. Another oh, Thomas. <laughs> Wayne Thomas bobbles the football. The Giants recover, I believe. Yes, it is. Bottom of the pile, number 58, Jim Files. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much. Everyone out there has been watching my videos. Thank you. If you could maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video. It would mean so much to me. But at least anyway, thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you all. Well, the dread five-letter word. Why the Cowboys are going this way and the Giants are going this way. Why the Cowboys are nine and four? Giants are four and nine. Cowboys going to the playoffs. Uh, Giants looking forward to next season. Fifth year in a row. Looking forward. <laughs> Draft. A dreaded five-letter word. The, um, the, the Giants, okay, on their roster right now. Uh, you know, this is including guys who are injured. You know, so, I mean, the Giants, yeah. Well, I was looking to have, um, you know, there's like 73 guys, 73 names I was looking at. So, a lot of guys on the roster. But, I know 73 guys, only 25 of them were actually drafted in the draft by the New York Giants. We got 32 guys on our, the roster that were drafted by another team. So, more than half. Uh, you know, and we have 16 undrafted free agents. You know, I mean, somebody like a Nick Gates, but, you know, other, other guys as well. But as far as in the draft, there were 73 names I was checking out with, you know, injuries, injury reserve, guys are on the roster, and all, you know, all that stuff. You know, 73 guys, and basically 25 of them, the Giants drafted in the draft. And, you know, you got to figure which I'm going to go over in a minute, a lot of those those 25, which I'm going to show you in a minute or two, is like the guys that, like, you know, are kind of attached to Joe Judge, pretty much. You know I mean? Because he's not, you know, a lot of the, you know, your coach and the GM, you know, you draft guys from this draft and maybe from the draft before, where, you know, you kind of attach to them. You know, those are you guys you brought in, you think you can make them work and all of that, and they're cheap this, that, and all that other stuff, so you kind of hold on to them, you know, um, realize the Cowboys, all right, so we basically got, between all the guys on the roster, a third of them, we drafted, one third, one out of every three, pretty much, the Cowboys on their roster, because they don't have as many injuries, out of them, when I was going over their roster with the injury reserve and all that stuff, and there were 65 names. Out of those 65 names, 35 of them, the Dallas Cowboys drafted in the NFL draft. So about almost about half, more more than half, the Cowboys drafted. We got a third. The Cowboys have more than a half. Cowboys only have on their roster. 13 guys that were drafted by another team. And one of them is Amari Cooper. And the Cowboys gave up a number one draft pick in 2019 to get him. So either they could have drafted maybe a wide receiver in the draft in 2019, but they gave they took their number one pick and they gave that, gave it away to get Amari Cooper. So, he wasn't drafted by him, but they did wind up giving up a draft pick to get him. So, so they only had 13 guys on their roster that was drafted by another team. We have 32. They have 17 guys undrafted free agents, but they have 35 guys out of the 65 names that I, I was looking over. More than half the Dallas Cowboys actually drafted. They know what they're doing with their draft. We're kind of struggling. I don't want to say we don't know. We don't have a clue. Not like that. Yeah, but 
we're kind of, we're kind of struggling a little bit in that area. And once this season's over, we got 25, right? Once this season's over, you know, we got, we're going to be letting Evan Ingram go. I mean, there's some guys are going to be gone because we can't afford to pay them. <laughs> Thanks to Dave Gellman. Uh, Lorenzo Carter, he's going to be gone. Uh, quite possibly, Will Hernandez is going to be gone, you know, because we, we ain't going to have the money to wind up paying him. You know, once those guys are gone, we're going to have one guy from the 2016 draft and one guy on the roster from the 2018 draft. So from 2018 on back, we only have two guys on our roster that we drafted. Saquon Barkley and Sterling Shepard. And, and the, the way things are going, uh, we're probably not going to re-sign Saquon because, I mean, can't possibly give the guy $14, 15000000 million a year. Can't do it. And as soon as Sterling Shepard's, you know, whoever the new GM is, certainly as soon as Sterling Shepard can be released without too much of a dead cat pit, he, he's gone. He's missed 18 games so far over the past three seasons. Not even full three seasons. Um, he missed, what, four or five games in a row? I think he played the Kansas City game, and then he missed four or five games in a row and he, and with a quad. He comes back, plays the one game with the Chargers. I think he had two receptions. Now he's listed on the injury list when he has a calf problem. I mean, it's, the guy can't even play a game without, without something else popping up. It's just, it's just amazing. It's uh, Kadarius Tony too. I mean, he, you know, same thing with him. I mean, he's, he's got, you know, um, um, you know the, the COVID and all. I get that. But, I mean, same thing with him. Uh, he plays a game, and he's on the injury reserve. Uh, not the injury reserve, but he's on the injury list for something. Kenny Galladay, same thing. I mean, he's had like five different injuries this year. Absolutely, simply amazing. The, um, so, the 2019 draft, we got Daniel Jones, Dexter Lawrence, Shane Zimenez, Julian Love, and Darius Slayton. Um, you know, I can't see Slayton being around much longer, and Shane Zimenez, I can't see him being around much longer either, just to be honest with you. I mean, whoever the new GM is might just... <laughs> see you later. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. I mean, Julian Love's a decent quality, you know, piece. Dexter Lawrence, I mean... They probably might pick up his fifth year because I think his fifth year, Dexter Lawrence, um, is, is around $10 million, but do you, do you want to pay him? I mean, you, yeah. is he worth $15, $16 million a year? I don't think so. We got Daniel Jones, do that night. Is he our, is he our starting quarterback for the future? Who knows? Then the 2020 draft, all right, we got Andrew Thomas. Pencil that dude in. As long as injuries don't derail him. Pencil him in for the next 10 years at left tackle. Or unless we draft another tackle, and we maybe, you know, like maybe Neil from Alabama, put him at left tackle, maybe put Andrew Thomas over right tackle, whatever. But pencil Andrew Thomas in at tackle for the next 10 years for the New York Giants. Dude's a stud. Love the pick. And the thing I like about it is the, uh, uh, Andrew Thomas, and, you know, has proven all of those naysayers wrong because everybody's like, oh, he's the worst tackle out of all of them. Nope, no, he's not. You're just an idiot. You can't see quality talent. Like something like Lewis Riddick was uh, always picking on Andrew Thomas, saying he's the worst. He was by far the worst tackle in the draft in that, that first round that the Giants picked him. And he said, by far. Get the frick out of here. You know, uh, you're stupid by far. That's what you are. Anyway, uh, Andrew, Xavier McKinney, love the, love the pick. So these are guys from 2020. Matt Parrott. Mm -hmm. Uh, Darnay Holmes, good good quality pick. You got Shane Lemieux, can't wait for him to come back next year. Cam Brown, uh, Carter Coughlin, and Tay Crowder. Right, so we got eight guys in the 2020 draft, and then we got uh, Darius Tony, Cezo Gilari, Aaron Robinson, Ellerson Smith, Gary Brightwell, and Darius Williams. So we got six guys from this past draft. All right. The Cowboys. All right, if you go back, they have. Um, so so if you go back from. With the Giants, 2018 and back, after the season's over, we're going to have two guys on our roster from 2018 on back. The Cowboys have one guy from 2011 on their roster. They have two guys from 2014 on their roster. They got one guy from 2015 on their roster. They got three guys from 2016 on their roster. Two guys from 2017. They got 
six guys on their freaking roster from 2018. After this season's over, we're going to have one guy on our roster from 2018. They got four guys in 2019, they got five guys in 2020, and they got 11 guys in 2021 on their roster. I mean, they got, they know how to draft, <laughs> and we're struggling. So from tw so after the season's over with, and we let those guys go, from 2018 on back, the Giants have two guys on their roster, which probably won't be there past next year. I, I can't, re you know, sign in um, Saquon or long, and I think once we can get rid of Sterling Shepard, the new GM is going to let him go. But ne next year, the Cowboys are going to have 15 guys on their roster from 2018 on back. We have two. 15 guys. I mean, it, 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 that's why we keep with, with Jerry Reese and, and now is that we were, the, the, the drafts we're having, we're, the guys are not good quality when we, where we wind up keeping them. We don't keep them because they're not that good. We let them go. And then we have now you have to sign free agents. You got to spend the money. Now the the, the as I said, their drafting is far superior to the Giants. Dallas is you know, Dallas isn't flawless. All right, you know, uh, you know every team has their mistakes. I mean, uh, in 2017, <laughs> Taco Charlton. Uh, yeah, he was he's a little bit of a misfire. He was drafted like 28th overall, something like that. I mean, that was not a you know. I mean, he looked good in college and all and everything, but he didn't plan out too well in the pros. So Taco Charlton <laughs> for the Cowboys. And then, of course, you got Morris Claiborne, 2012. Was not an unbelievably horrible pick. He got hurt a lot, but it, he was picked number six overall. I mean, that was a six overall swing and a miss there. So, I mean, they've had, you know, a couple misfires, but... Nothing like the Giants had, right? Now the problem, yeah, you know, it was the problem with Jerry Reese, is you know he had a good 20, uh, 2007 draft. A lot of the guys, all the guys that he drafted, all helped the team go when they won the Super Bowl. They all played a, their own special part in the team, making and winning the Super Bowl. He had a great 2007 draft, but after that, a lot of his, you know, you know, I mean, obviously, you know. <laughs> Eli Apple, Eric Flowers, we can just rattle off some other guys as well, too. I mean, he had some bad, bad drafts. And as time wore on, you know, the cupboard just started getting bare because, you know, we're not drafting nobody. <laughs> All right, we're not drafting anybody good. Yeah, so we have to go out and, and bring guys in. You can only spend so much money. So you get in a few good free agents and you got a bunch of other mediocre guys there. You don't have good records, which is what, you know, what we're kind of finding out right now. Um, you know, and that's what, you know, Dave Gittleman's had a, you know, you know, not a super stellar draft record either with the Giants. Now, you can look at, like, with the Cowboys. Go to their, uh, their just their offense, all right? Look, look at the guys they drafted, right? A, B, C, D, Lamb, they drafted him. Michael Gallup, they drafted him. Dalton Schultz, the tight end, they drafted him. Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard, both running backs. One of the best two running com back combos in the whole freaking league. They drafted both of those. Dak Prescott, they got him in the fourth round. Look at that. I mean, their offensive line. Connor Williams, Tyrone Smith. He went to going to seven Pro Bowls. They got him in 2011. Zach Martin, he's gone to six Pro Bowls. He's been an All-Pro four times. Lael Collins, I mean... Nobody during he was an undrafted free agent. All right, but you know, so they got him. Um, Travis Frederick, who's retired, they got him in 2013. He was a fantastic center. They got drafted him in 2013 in the first round. Fantastic center. And then, they, then they, you know, after he retired, they got Tyler Biotish uh, from Wisconsin. Now he's he's okay. They got him in the fourth round. They jumped up in front of the Giants to get him, but you know. He, He's okay, but you know he's their center. You know he, you know, they drafted him. Then uh, Connor McGovern too, drafted him too on the offensive line. And I said I mentioned this before. You know they didn't draft Amari Cooper, all right, but they did trade away a number one pick to get the guy. So they used the draft pick to get him. So I mean they didn't draft him, but you know they could have very well maybe gone out in the draft and, and drafted another wide receiver. And basically almost their whole offense. Is guys that they drafted. 
wide receivers, running back, quarterback, tight end, uh, offensive line. And they got one of the best offense. They got one of the best quarterbacks, one of the best wide receivers, one of the best wide receiver groups, one of the best offensive lines in the whole freaking league. They're second in points scored. I mean, we're, we're one of the worst. I mean, look at us. I mean, you got you know, our quarterbacks, Daniel Jones. Yeah, we drafted him. Number six. Is he the guy? We don't even know. Then we've got our other quarterbacks, Jake Fromm, we got him from the Bills. Mike Lennon, we got him from the Jaguars. You got uh, running back Saquon, but he's hurt all the time. So we don't, you know, we don't even, probably not going to want to resign him. Then we got uh, Booker, all right? But, he, but we got him from the from the Raiders. We didn't draft him. Uh, some of our wide receivers, you know, Colin Johnson, we got him from the Jags. Uh, John Ross, we got him from the Bengals. Dante Pettis, got him from the 49ers. Darius Slayton. I mean, I think when a new GM comes in, I don't think he's going to be around much longer. He's had a, he's had a, not a very good season at all. It's like his rookie season was very good, and he's just kind of plummeted off since then. Evan Ingram, the tight end, yeah, we drafted him, but we're going to wind up letting him go because he's not good enough to keep, especially the amount of money he's going to want. Uh, Kyle Rudolph, our tight end, we got him from Minnesota. Kenny Galladay, wide receiver, we got him from the Lions. Uh, Kadarius, Tony, and Sterling Shepard, we both drafted them when they're healthy. Very, very, and if you can use them right, especially Kadarius, Tony, two very, very good picks. But as I said, Sterling Shepard's missed 18 games in the past three years, and he can easily miss, the way he's going, easily miss another one or two games. Kadarius, Tony can't even stay healthy on the field. I mean, so we drafted the guys, but what good are you if you're on the sideline all the time? I mean, you can just see it's like night and day. I mean, their offensive coordinator uh, for, for Dallas, he, he's up for the, um, I think, possibly might get, the, you know, get some consideration for the Jaguars job. Our offensive coordinators, we're just trying to, we're just trying to get rid of them because they're so horrible. <laughs> we're like the worst scoring team in the league, and they're like the second best. I mean, drafting, drafting. And you, you can look at our our defense. I mean, you know, we drafted some guys, sure. But, I mean, Leonard Williams, we didn't draft him. Blake Martinez, we didn't draft him. Reggie Ragland, we didn't draft him. Jabril Peppers, we didn't draft him. Danny Shelton, we didn't draft him. Logan Ryan, Quincy Roche, I'm glad the Steelers let him go. But we didn't draft him. Uh, Bernardrick McKinney, Austin Johnson, Dory Jackson, our two solid stud Cornerback. We didn't draft either one of them. James Bradbury, Dory Jackson. And, we, and if we could draft good, decently, and properly, we wouldn't even need those guys because we got DeAndre Baker and Eli Apple. We should be penciling those dudes in for years. Well, I mean, maybe not Eli Apple because Eli was in uh, 2016. So, you know, but, you know, if he was that good, I mean, you, you pay him. We'd have him for at least a few more years. Then we got DeAndre Baker. Right? If he, uh, Apple starts falling off a little bit, now he becomes a number two cornerback, and you got DeAndre Baker as a number one. But no. <laughs> it's the same thing with the offense. We should have two stud D offensive tackles. We should have Eric Flowers and Andrew Thomas. But no, because we're not drafting well enough. We drafted Eric Flowers, and he is at number 10, or I'm sorry, number nine, or oh, he's a bust. <laughs> He's, he's, he's working as a decent guard, I think, with, with the uh, the Reds, uh, with the Washington football team. But, I mean, he's not a first-rounder. Absolutely no way. <laughs> well, we drafted him in the first round. So the guys we drafted in the first round just aren't quality, uh, first-round quality guys. When the Cowboys pick somebody, it's usually they're right, <laughs> you know, and we're wrong. The uh, And it's good that this goes back all the way. You know, in 1960, the Cowboys, that was, their, that was their first year in existence. The Cowboys were 0-11-1. They played, they, they had one tie. You know who they tied? In, Yank, in, in Yankee Stadium, they tied the Giants 31-31. The Giants, 1956, 58, 59, 61, 62, and 63, we went to the championship. So in 1963, the first year the Cowboys were in existence, they come into the Yankee Stadium and they tie the Giants. Unbelievable. And there's been six, the Cowboys came in existence since 1960. 
basically it's been six decades, right? You got the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010 to 2021, right? It's about six decades. There's only been one out of the six decades where the New York Giants have won more games head-to-head -head than the, uh, against the Dallas Cowboys than the Dallas Cowboys have won against the Giants. 1960s, when the Cowboys were an expansion team, the first year, they were all 11-1. In the 60s, the Giants established. Giants went to all these, these six championship games. From 56 to 63, they went to six championship games. So the Giants were established. They got Hall of Famers, good quality players, good coaching, all this stuff and everything. In the 1960s, after the 60s were over, the Cowboys beat the Giants more times than the Giants. The Cowboys won nine games. The Giants only won six, and they, they tied two times. That was in the 60s. In the 70s, the Cowboys beat the Giants 17 out of 20 times. The Giants beat the Cowboys three times. It's 1970 once, 1972 they beat them once, and 1974 they beat them once. Since 19, from 74, or I should say, from 75 to 79, the Giants didn't beat the Cowboys not once. The Giants beat the Cowboys in 1970 at home. 72 and 74, they beat them in Dallas. So that means from 1971 to 1979, nine years there, the Giants lost every game at home to the Dallas Cowboys. Every game. 1980s, all right, they, uh, each team won nine games. That was, you know, that was the, the decade of Lawrence. And we were only able to tie them. You know, we, 1986 and 1990, we won two Super Bowls. And we were only... We, we couldn't even win more games head-to-head -head than against the Dallas. Dallas didn't go to any Super Bowls. We went to two. We won, we won, and we were tied, nine games apiece. In the 90s, the Cowboys reigned supreme. The Cowboys won 12, at, uh, won 12 and the Giants won eight because, yeah, that was, that was the year that the Cowboys, uh, you know, the, the decade the Cowboys won their three Super Bowls. In, in, from 2000 to 2009 was the only decade that the Giants won more football games head-to-head. -head. The Giants won 13, the Cowboys won 8. Why well, it's 21 games is because in 2007 season, they had the playoff game, so they played an extra game. But from 2000 to 2009 is the only decade the New York Giants won more games against the Dallas Cowboys head-to-head. -head. They won 13-8. And then basically since... 2010 to 2021, the Cowboys have won 15, and the Giants have only won eight. And after this weekend over, the Cowboys are going to win. So basically, after this Sunday's over, the Cowboys have won 16 out of the last 24 games against the Giants, going back to 2010. The Cowboys, after this Sunday, I'm just just letting letting you know how it's going. To be. Giants going to lose. Um, the Cowboys will be 71. 47 and 2 against the New York Giants. They won 71, and the Giants have only won 47 times against the Cowboys, and they've tied twice. It's sad. Very, very sad. The Giants, you know, drafting is inferior to the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, you know, they know what they're doing. I hate saying it because I can't stand the Cowboys, can't stand the Eagles, but you got to give credit where credit's due. The Dallas Cowboys know how to draft. And speaking of Dallas Cowboys and drafting players, the Giants on the practice squad got Jalen Smith, who the Dallas Cowboys drafted. Now, Jalen Smith, would, um, he came out after his junior season at Notre Dame he, he, in, in the, the, against Ohio State in the, the bowl game. He First quarter, I think it was, so he, he tore his ACL and his LCL. The Cowboys drafted him in the second round. He, the 2016, he sat out all season to you know, rehab and all that and everything. So when he came back 2017, he was, he, you know, he was ready to go. But that's one of the reasons why a lot of these guys start sitting out the bowl games once they make it there. They, they sit because what happened to him. Jalen Smith was probably going to be a top five pick because of that injury. He went to the second round. So he lost a lot of money. In 2019, though, the Cowboys gave him a five-year, $64.5 million contract extension. You know, so, but, you know, when they got Micah Parsons, he wound up becoming expendable. Plus, also, I mean, he had a couple, he had some, he had like three really good years. 
back to back to back. Where he, he was in like one year he had like over 150 tackles. One other year I think he had over 140 combined tackles. I mean he was really doing good. But now I don't know if it's something to do with the the knee or exactly what it is. But apparently he's got a he's not. He was kind of slowing down and not doing as anywhere near as good as he could. And as I said, they had Micah Parsons in there. He was expendable. He's expensive, expendable, and they just let him go because they got somebody to take his place. So then the Packers picked him up, you know, and he only played two games for him, and they let him go. So that had, you know, he had he played apparently it was 27 snaps and he, and he had uh, one, one tackle. 27 snaps. So, I mean, yeah. Um, he's on a practice squad for the Giants. Uh, I don't know if it's something wrong with the knee again, if he's going to need more surgery or whatever. Who knows? I mean, um, this is what his fifth year in the, you know, in, the, in the league. I don't know if his career is over with or what, but I mean, if the Cowboys let him go, and then he went to the Packers, he played two games there, they let him go, you know, I wouldn't expect too much out of him. I mean, he said maybe he needs a year off, maybe he needs more surgery, I don't know, but, you know, it, it's a nice good feel, you know, good feel story and all that and everything, but I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't look too much into it. Uh, you know, maybe he'll make the roster someday, but, I mean, is he going to be a super duper spectacular big splash for the Giants? Nah. Now, what would be interesting would be if he went up against, if the Giants got him like about a week or so earlier, you know, maybe, you know, they, you know he got up to snuff with the defense a little bit like that and you actually put him on the field. I bet you, you know, he's not going to be a super spectacular player, I don't think, but I think he would probably have a pretty decent day against his former team. I think he'd like to show him, you know, what he can do. And... Unfortunately, probably the way the game's going to go, the Dallas Cowboys offense will be on the field quite a bit. So that would mean Jalen Smith would be on the Giants defense quite a bit. So he would probably get a few tackles. But I mean, as far as him making any type of big type of splash, I wouldn't look for anything this year. And maybe if he's hanging around next year, maybe. But I mean, as of right now, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look too much into it. I mean, it's exciting. You hope nothing for the best. It's the same thing with Jake Fromm. You hope nothing but the best, but, you know, when reality sets, <laughs> you're going to find out that uh, eh, it's not quite all, it was, uh, you know, blown up to be, you know. But well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!